So Cambridge Department of Geography will launch two new MPhil programs, one in the Anthropocene studies, the other entitled Holocene climates. Uh, good morning. Um, we are here in the library of the Department of Geography at the University of Cambridge. I am uh, pleased to welcome Professor Mike Hume. He is the director of the new MPhil in Anthropocene studies, which we just launched this year. And uh, Mike, you are not alone here. Uh, who did you, did you bring? <laughs> so uh, this morning I've asked Joseph. Uh, Joseph, you're one of the, uh, the first members of the cohort uh, on, on this program, this new program. Now, you've been here a few weeks now. Just what are your immediate impressions of the course and some of the other students you've met? Uh, I think it's been uh, really positive. Uh, it's been much more lively than I was expecting given the circumstances and of course uh, nobody normal applies for the first year of Anthropocene studies in the middle of a pandemic and fortunately they've all been more normal than I was expecting. Okay so when you say normal I think your background is in anthropology and archaeology uh, so what other sorts of disciplines have you encountered from some of your colleagues? Yeah, I certainly thought that I would be slightly out of my depth or slightly out of my comfort zone expecting people with a more geographical background, but most of the people, uh, we come from a real variety of, of backgrounds, English, physics, art, social science, and of course geography. Yeah. And then the Anthropocene, I guess the Anthropocene is an idea that you probably came across in your anthropology, archaeology. What do you think is interesting with the way that we're trying to introduce the Anthropocene in geography? So for me, I think geography offers uh, methodologically a very broad church for uh, thinking through these ideas and in a way which is uh, less um, sort of, what do you say, uh, kind of dogmatic than it would be if you imagined what an Anthropocene studies would look like in uh, a department such as archaeology or anthropology. Uh, yeah, so I think geography is, that's the, the value for me. Well that's good, good to hear because I think that's certainly very much how we, we imagine the course unfolding, uh, teaching the idea of Anthropocene in a geography department. Now, just one last question. I asked Catherine this question as well about the dissertation. So this is something you complete next summer. I know it's still quite early, but have you had any thoughts or ideas about what might be an interesting topic for a dissertation? Yeah, so one, one idea that I'm curious about at the moment is uh, plastic pollution. And I'm I, I think the, the way we're thinking about the Anthropocene here is about how the or human relations to the environment aren't just climate change, but there's, there's much more to it than this. And I think this is an interesting material to think through this, uh, this idea, or this one of these ideas perhaps. Uh, but at the moment, uh, I'm enjoying the time to think about what sort of methodologies might be appropriate or valuable for um, for researching that kind of or exploiting that kind of idea. Yes, and, and one of the, the courses that we have introduced here uh, uh, introduces you to a variety of different research methods, both quantitative and qualitative. Have you uh, found those demanding or stretching, or are you familiar with them? Uh, they've certainly been quite unfamiliar to me, some of them, uh, especially statistics. Um, although much less less daunting than I was expecting, but still uh, it is a, it is a chance to challenge uh, or rethink some of the some of the research techniques that I, I suppose I'm more used to, and to obviously stretch the the and mingle the boundaries between those kind of natural science or social science or humanities even sort of research approaches. Yeah well that's great again um, 
very much how we designed the course to bring those different methodological approaches together. Joseph, thank you. That's great to chat this morning. Uh, we'll see you again in the class next week. Yeah, likewise. You're doing great. Yeah, so Catherine, it is lovely just to have this chance to ask you one or two questions. You've been now here at Cambridge for three or four weeks on the programme. Just tell us about your first impressions of the course. Yes, so yes, I have been here for three or four weeks now, and I come directly from the Philippines. I've got a policy background as well. So being here in the Anthropocene studies allows me to use my expertise and also to challenge my own expertise because the program is designed um, to have a variety of conversations with people from diverse backgrounds and different backgrounds. So it's been a very pleasant experience. Uh, and, and you come from the Philippines. In the Philippines, would there be a course like this that you could have taken on Anthropocene? Is the Anthropocene an idea that people in the Philippines would be interested in? Yes, I think there is definitely a demand for Anthropocene programs in the Philippines, especially because we're saddled with typhoons every so often. There's one happening right now, actually. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, however, uh, programs like this are not available in the Philippines. We have to go to Cambridge just to get something like this. Mm. Well, it's lovely to have you here. Um, now, you mentioned there are different students studying on this program, some from geography, some from English literature, some from anthropology, some from biological science. How do you find interacting with these other disciplines in some of the smaller discussion groups that you have? Yes, um, I love the interactions with my fellow cohort. I think the cohort size really helped. So for instance, my previous program, we had 100 people and there was very little um, space for in-depth discussion. However, here we have less than 20. So this number is really good because it helps you fine tune your ideas and sort of know which person to go to for a specific question. And in return, you get like different perspectives on a singular topic. So at the end of the day, you've got uh, people who can turn oranges into apples and apples into oranges. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. Now, just one, one, one other thing. Uh, uh, part of the program is to do an independent piece of study, research, or a dissertation. Uh, this will be done next summer. Uh, I'm just interested, have you had any ideas or thoughts about what you might study for your dissertation topic? Yes, thank you. Um, I think my first original idea was to do something about international law in the Anthropocene. But when I got here and I got introduced to different novel ideas, I was sort of considering changing because uh, some of these topics I haven't heard of before, like visual cultures, we've got science and policy, post-colonial Anthropocene studies. So it's very cool to be interested, to be um, introduced to these new topics. Mm. And um, I'm also looking forward to the residential school after Lent term where we get to have like a laboratory of ideas or a reservoir of conversations. Yeah, that's a great expression. I love that, the laboratory of ideas. And, yeah. and we go away for three or four days together and really think through in some detail how your dissertations are going to be conducted uh, during the next summer. So that's something we're looking forward to as well as, as teaching staff. So um, thank you. That's great, Catherine. Um, thank you. It was my lovely, pleasure. Lovely to have you with us. So Chiara, welcome to the uh, library of the Department of Geography. We are just a couple of ma uh, weeks into the new academic year. It is very exciting for us, for the department, uh, for Mike Hume, who is the director of the Anthropocene Studies, and myself, I'm responsible for the uh, uh, Holocene climate. You are one of our students, of my students, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to to have you here, how, how has it been the, the first three weeks? Yeah, so far it's been a really positive experience even under the current conditions. I feel like we've got to have a lot of group discussions and look, got to learn lots of new things in person as well, which is um, so beneficial over Zoom, I feel. And um, you have had some lectures, so we have lectures live in person in the large lecture theatre. 
that uh, has the capacity uh, to, to host all 25 students. So these are joint lectures with the Anthropocene students. How is that for you? Yeah, it's been a really positive. Um, I feel it's been really interesting getting the perspective of the Anthropocene students on issues in our course as well as vice versa. And there's a really interesting overlap which allows um, a lot of ideas to be exchanged both ways. Yeah. I get, uh, I guess it's uh, bringing everyone partly out of the comfort zone. So you, there is an interdisciplinary module we are offering where I guess each of you is challenging in, in a way. Yeah, it's been really um, challenging, especially like as a physical scientist. It's quite an uh, uncomfortable way of thinking, considering more social ideas in science. But I found it really beneficial, and I think it, there's a lot of ideas that I could take from it into my own research. Yeah. So you just mentioned your own research. So uh, right from the beginning, we are um, forcing you to actively think, think critically about uh, potential dissertation topics. And uh, is that something uh, you already started to do? Is that something you also discuss with your with your fellow uh, students? Uh, yeah, so right now there's been quite a few, uh, well, a lot of ideas introduced, so there's a lot to pick from. But so far I've really enjoyed the dendro cohomology stuff and um, looking at how cooling, um, cooling events in the Holocene are reflected in tree rings. Wow, uh, you mentioned tree rings. Is that, uh, so have you uh, been at the tree ring unit, so in the laboratory? Is that already something you uh, have been able to visit? Uh, yeah, so we got the opportunity to do a practical there and look under the microscope ourselves and start to analyse the tree ring samples, which was really interesting. I've never been able to do that before. Okay, so that is uh, something you might consider for uh, a dissertation. Yeah, I'm very, very enthusiastic to look into it further. Okay, uh, one last question. So, um, in addition to the uh, relatively uh, tight program of lectures and practicals, we are also offering the opportunity uh, to self-organize sessions and meetings, discussion uh, groups within the cohort of one of the programs, but also across them. So uh, do you think that this is a useful uh, way and how is there some self-dynamic -dynam already? Yeah, so so far we've really been use utilizing um, the opportunity to meet together in the space and it's been really useful being able to, because I feel there's so much content available in the Holocene, no one can by themselves um, divulge in all of it. So to be able to like hear about what other people have been reading and their ideas and how they all interact has been really, um, really productive. And then also being able to interact with the Anthropocene students, you get an entire different take on things we, we've been studying on our side of the course. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us this morning and uh, all the best for the remaining weeks until Christmas. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. How do you find it so far, Kira? Um, yeah, I found it really interesting incorporating some more kind of social ideas into the physical science side of it. And um, I think being able to learn with the Anthropocene group as well is quite unique because it's considering like the future beyond the Holocene and also a crossover mm -hmm. in the present that could potentially be interpreted that way. How about you, Catherine? Yes, um, I agree with you completely. I love it as well. And most of these sessions are hold, held in Zoom, aren't they? So like you'd think a virtual space would be a bit um, static, but it's so alive because of our simulations. Like almost every week we've got simulations going on where we sort of apply what we learned hands-on in like role plays and stuff like that. Did you enjoy the volcanic eruption simulation? Yeah, that was really fun. And we always work in like small groups where we're mixed as well with um, Anthropocene students. So it's um, always interesting to kind of see the like, division of ideas and how they come together. Yes. I also love that in the small groups, like there's always one human geographer and one physical geographer. And most of the physical geographers tend to come from Holocene, right? Oh yeah, definitely. So that's cool because it's like a different perspective from social scientists.